Welcome to our lecture online. There's actually a, quite a number of ways in which we can show that the general theory of relativity is indeed correct and can be used to explain all kinds of things that otherwise would be completely unexplainable. Already back in the early 1800s, they knew that there was something strange about the orbit of Mercury. Now, Mercury has a very eccentric orbit. It's almost off by about 10% from a circular orbit. So, when it's close to the Sun, it is much closer to the Sun than when it's far away. There's a huge difference in the distance from Mercury to the Sun when it's at its per perihelion versus at aphelion. Now, normally you wouldn't expect that to be any reason for strange behavior to the orbit, but we do know that the entire orientation of an orbit of a planet tends to process around the Sun. And the reason for that is because there's all kinds of gravitational interaction between the planet and all the other planets and moons and asteroids in the solar system. Primarily, of course, the big ones, and the biggest one, of course, is Jupiter. So the gravitational attraction between the big planets and any other planet in the solar system causes a gradual shift or rotation of the axis connecting the aphelion to the perihelion of a planet. And it's especially noticeable when the planet is close to the Sun and when the, ellipt when the orbit is very eccentric. And of course, in the case of Mercury, that is the case. But there's an additional factor at play. The special, not the special, but the general theory of relativity. It turns out when they calculated the effect of all the other planets in the solar system on the orbit of Mercury without taking into account at the time because the general theory of relativity was not yet known in the early 1800s, when they calculated the amount of the shift and then they actually measured the amount of the shift, there was a discrepancy. It turns out that very careful observations showed that the planet Mercury shifted 574 arc seconds every single century. Now, you may say, well, that's not a lot, and that's indeed the case. 574 arc seconds is only about 9.6 arc minutes, which is about one-sixth of a degree. Can you imagine that they were able to measure the orbital shift of Mercury to that kind of precision 200 years ago when it's that small of a change in an entire century, but they were able to do that. So when they calculated the effects of gravity, according to the Newtonian laws and, the four, and the, of course, the equation of gravity made up by Newton, they were able to explain all but 43 arc seconds. In other words, the precession, 574, was 43 arc seconds more than it should be that they were able to calculate. So if we subtract 43 from that, the actual number should be 531 arc seconds. So that's what they calculated. So there was a additional 43 arc seconds that nobody could explain. They had no way to explain why the shift was 43 arc seconds more than what it should be per century. Until Einstein, until the concept of the general theory of relativity. Not only is gravity stronger as you get closer, and therefore there's a greater warp in space, it turns out that the warp in space also affects time. When you're in a stronger gravitational field, when space is warped more, time slows down. When there's less of a warp, when the gravitational force is smaller, time runs faster. And it's this difference in time that causes the motion to be such that there's more of a shift, a, a precession shift, than there should be if we ignore that change in time. And later on, we'll do, a, we'll do a, a, a video where we showed through the equation how that was actually calculated. But this was actually measured, calculated, and understood that there was this strange discrepancy that no one could, under that no one could explain. When Einstein came around, and he came up with this theory of the general theory of relativity, and they started calculating how much an effect that change in time would be when the planet is closer and the planet is far away from the Sun, they ended up coming up with a calculation that showed that it would indeed make a difference of exactly, well, very, very close to 43 arc seconds. And so there was an exact comparison between the missing 43 seconds, arc seconds and the ones they calculated when they used the calculation derived from the, the general theory of relativity. It was unbelievable. It was amazing how close the two numbers were. 
And finally, they were able to explain something they weren't able to explain for almost a hundred years. The theory definitely shows that time slows down in a stronger gravitational field, causing the motion of the planet Mercury to process more than it normally should if we did not take that time differential into account. And the calculated value was almost spot on the exact missing difference of 43 arc seconds. Imagine what people found and, and, and thought when they saw that amazing correlation. But the most important part of it all is it proved the accuracy of the general theory of relativity. It really did show that there's things that are different that cannot be explained by Newtonian mechanics, that cannot be explained by the equation of gravity as set up by Newton. In these events, where things change when the warp of space is such that time is slower, it does have an effect on the motion of the planet. And that is how it was discovered. Pretty amazing, huh? <laughs> and there's an equation that actually comes up with those 43 arc seconds. And we'll do a video on that later. I'm sure you will. <laughs> All right.